Rodeo Weekend uh rodeo weekend in montgomery so that's what everybody does it seems like down here on the, the weekend or excuse me this weekend um as paige mentioned it has been uh the first of two uh breaks for the legislature this year uh that they're wrapping up this week it was well uh well needed uh, they've been doing they've done five three-day weeks meaning they've gone into session uh, three out of the three days in the week, and that can really wear you down. Uh, as a legislator, certainly um, being on this side of the fence now, I know it, it wears us down as well. So we were, uh, the break was welcome. We expect them to uh, come back next week and get back to work. Um, as far as uh, one of our top defensive issues that we are working on that uh, y'all have uh, we've spoken about is the PBM bill um, that bill did make it out of committee uh, last or week before um, and we sort of expected it to do uh, unfortunately uh, the speaker uh, Nathaniel Ledbetter has been good enough to slow that bill down um, so that we you know um, can continue to work on it, get our message out. Um, you know, we sent out, BCA sent out another call uh, to action earlier in the week to our members. The uh, pharmacists are hammering uh, the members of the legislature. I mean, they're working them over really hard and we really urged our members uh, from the business community to contact uh, the senators and house members and make sure that, that um, they know that there's plenty of opposition on the other side, what it's going to do to their business, what it's going to do to their employees, uh, and frankly, just make sure that, um, you know, we're going to have their back if they, if they do the right thing and vote no on it. Um, that seems to be uh, going in our favor, but we're going to continue to, uh, to push and make sure that that bill meets a timely demise. Um, this next week, we will be uh, ready to file our workforce uh, package, our workforce reform. Um, the, the plan is uh, hopefully those bills will be filed on Thursday. Uh, we are planning on having a press conference uh, at 930 uh, with the governor and other legislative leaders, lieutenant governor. Um, so we will... Uh, you know, obviously continue to focus on PBM, but as far as playing offense and, and moving the needle uh, in the, uh, you know, the, the favor of the business community, we're, we're going to be, be pushing that package very hard through the legislative process. Gaming, uh, the Senate, you know, y'all know that the House passed a, a very comprehensive gaming package. Uh, BCA is neutral on this, we're agnostic, Although we, you know, like anything else that's big, we do monitor it. Uh, the Senate uh, took the took the bill and whittled it down. Uh, no new casinos, no sports betting. Um, you know, stronger enforcement to get rid of the the bad actors out there. Um, that bill uh, did pass the Senate. Uh, it will it will ultimately uh, probably. My prediction is not be concurred with uh, uh, the House isn't really going to probably accept that. Um, so they will probably go to what's called a conference committee uh, to try to work out the differences between the Senate and the House. Um, there's actually two, two bills associated with this. One would be the constitutional amendment uh, and then the other. Uh, bill would basically be the the details uh, where the money would go, et cetera. Um, you know, I think they'll work something out, but um, I don't think there's a lot of leeway uh, in the Senate really to to get a lot more uh, of what the House had in their bills. But we'll we'll see. School choice passed, signed uh, by the governor, so we had we do have. Uh, the school choice bill, the Choose Act, um, is um, is uh, has you know has passed, has signed, uh, and so that that hopefully will will begin to move uh, uh, K twelve education in the right direction. Certainly provide some opportunities for 
uh, parents and students to have a little more choice in their child's education. Um, the other bill that we are we are very interested in uh, is the ethics reform bill by uh, Representative Simpson uh, out of Baldwin County. Um, this bill um, we think is 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 a very good step in the right direction. Um, you may read that you know it's weakening Alabama's ethics laws, whatever. It's it's really not. <clears throat> the problem with Alabama's ethics laws, and I was you know my after I first got elected, we went into a special session pretty soon after uh, on ethics reform and passed some sweeping reforms. Um, there's a lot of gray area in our ethics laws, a lot of gray area. And, you know, people forget that these, these laws don't just affect the people of the, in, you know, that are serving in the Alabama legislature. It affects, um, you know, public, public employees. I mean, it's, I think, I think it's somewhere around 350,000 people are, are under Alabama's ethics laws. And like any law, there really shouldn't be any gray area, especially, especially something like this. It needs to be very black and white. Um, this bill really seeks to try to um, clarify a lot of um, the law that there frankly is a lot of questions. It also leaves a lot of interpretation up to the Alabama Ethics Commission, which is un, an unelected commission that that just, I just don't think that's good governance. And I think that, that there needs to be uh, some reform. So that bill uh, did get out of House, uh, House committee last week. Um, and we uh, are expecting it possibly to be on the floor uh, of the house this week and again bca is uh you know strongly strongly uh watching that bill uh, alabama strong uh the uaw front um we think that's going well um the 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 plants uh the uaw uh, you know continues to say that they're signing up more and more people uh we intercepted some flyers out of hyundai and out of uh, out of Mercedes uh, this this week that uh, um, you know they think they're getting close to being able to to, to call an election. Um, we're we're not sure. Uh, billboards are up uh, in Montgomery and in Tuscaloosa. Our our radio ads are up. Uh, hope y'all maybe heard uh, some of them. We have a really good ad, and then we are targeting uh, those two markets with uh, with social media. We continue to work on. Uh, influencers uh, and um, and working with our local chambers uh, to make sure that uh, that hopefully if they are, if there is a vote it will not be successful. So with that, love to open it up for uh, any questions y'all might have. Hey, I have a question um, about the UAW issue. I know several years ago. Um, they had a vote and it was not successful. What's making this so different? Number one, they have a a pretty dynamic new leader in Sean Fain. If you watched the uh, State of the Union address this past week, he was actually a guest of President Biden and was recognized. Um, frankly, their 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 wins uh, in Detroit, kind of according to them, wins. Uh, Detroit has laid off more people, um, which always happens after these votes. Uh, they they trade. I mean, there's a direct correlation to trading wages for uh, for jobs uh, when it comes to uh, the UAW. Um, but they're really using those uh, wins as hey, if you unionize, we can get you better hours. We we can get you job security. We can get you. Um, better wages, which simply is not the case. Um, there is no job security there. There was an article, interesting article, a couple of weeks ago uh, from the uh, some of the workers that were laid off in Detroit after the the unions or after the the the, 
the renegotiations. Um, and they, they just know that this is their time uh, and that the South is the place to get the votes or excuse me, get the new union dues. They have had uh, tremendous amounts of uh, people leave the union and frankly, a lot less membership because those plants are leaving uh, those areas and they're, they're going to Mexico or they're coming to the, to the Southeastern United States. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what's really pushing them. It's a, it's a variation of things. They actually voted a couple of weeks ago, uh, to spend $40 million in the, in the, just targeting the auto plants in the South, uh, for the next two years, 40 million. Um, that's, that's hard to combat, but you know, y'all, y'all heard me say it. They're targeting the South, uh, cause that's, that's where the dues are. 50,000 potential new dues in Alabama alone at around, I think they say the average would be around 900 and something dollars a person per year. That's a tremendous amount of, of, of new revenue for, uh, for the UAW. So you've also, you also have new, um, new rules that, 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 that the, uh, National Labor Relations Board passed in mid uh, December uh, that allows uh, your your cards, your union cards, to be signed on your cell phone. Uh, it also allowed um, micro units to organize in the plant. So, you know, one key area of the plant uh, could unionize and, and shut down that whole plant. You know, and they also shortened the time window of uh, when the NLRB certifies uh, that they've reached the threshold to have Let's a vote, that. now they can uh, have it in ACC two weeks. So chamber update yeah. thing. So there's just there's there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that are that are giving them um, kind of the the momentum that we're trying to combat. Well, we have free. Hey. I, I, I think you're muted. Okay. What I was about to say is we thank you for all you're doing and taking the leadership and helping us because it's not just the large auto manufacturers that's going to be impacted by this. All of us that have, you know, first and second tier suppliers that we recruit or trying to keep in the area. Um, and so having that collective voice, I think is something big. I know our CEO, Steve Ammons, um, has really appreciated the fact that it's not just a lone voice out there. Thank you. Well, you're, you're welcome. Y'all, y'all have been a great, great partner. And to your point, yes, it is the suppliers as well. So, I mean, and those are my former district has some, some, some major tier twos. Um, that that you know our local economic development folks are watching um, to make sure. And, and look, if if y'all are hearing of 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 any organizing efforts in in your suppliers, you know, please reach out to us and and let us know, and we can we can get that on our screen and begin to um, you know if we need to shift some resources uh, in your area to help you. Any other questions? Thank you, Nan. Anybody else have a good question? Thank you, Clay. Um, can you, I know you said we anticipate the workforce uh, package to be um, unveiled, I guess, for lack of a better term, next week. Is that something um, that you can share kind of what's to be expected in that? Not details yet. We, okay. well, because because there's there's still some finishing touches uh, being being put on it. Um, okay. There there could possibly be a little bit of slight opposition to it. Um, I hope not. I hope by by the time we get there, that's going to be uh, all all ironed out. Um, so that's why. We don't mean to be cryptic, but it, it is part of the process. Um, but the, the big thing is 
um, someone needs to be in charge, right? Uh, someone needs to uh, needs to get up every day thinking about workforce, coordinating efforts, making sure that we are delivering workforce um, in a way that 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 is helping to move the needle. Um, you know, obviously the the um, a, a big uh, a big part of it um, is not only workforce reform, but it is that um, that workforce participation component that we're we're very interested in. So the child care tax credit that's definitely definitely in there, um, and and still trying to kind of work out uh, the cost of that, uh, making sure that that we're not going to put the state in a in a in an unhealthy bind financially. Um, but we firmly believe that, 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 that it will work. Um, and, uh, we can just get it in there and show that it's working. I think it'll, 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 it'll be, be there to stay. So, um, stay tuned for Thursday. I think, it'll, I think y'all, I think y'all, will, y'all be impressed. Mike, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, Clay, thanks again for, um, talking with the chamber group when we were in Montgomery last week. Uh, you did a great job. Um, is, is there anything further on uh, funding for the SEEDS Act, increasing that uh, funding cap? That, that's actually, that's a, that's a good question. That is actually a part of the package. So, so part of the package really isn't bills. It's not okay. all legislation. It is, it is priorities for us. Um, you know, there's there's a little pushback on on the seeds act there there is um and you know we just we believe strongly that there should be more investment i mean we are um alabama really is um uh, you know sort of a victim of our own success we are running out of developable property uh, uh with the right infrastructure uh, spread throughout the state, and the Seeds Act uh, is a critical way that 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 we we seek to um, you know try to try to alleviate that. So we're asking for another twenty five million uh, in the budget this year for the Seeds Act, um, and hopefully we'll hopefully we'll be successful in, in getting uh, getting getting that. The the more uh, resource. Clay, I lost you. I think we did. That it's let me text. Oh, Clay, can you hear us? Um. While we try to get Clay back, let me um, real quickly remind you guys that our capital briefings are every other Friday um, that we do Zoom. Unfortunately, the way we set the schedule and then they set spring break schedule. So um, the next will be on the Friday of spring break, but I anticipate there to be quite a bit of movement um, this next week that we'll be able to talk about in the next week. But then on the interim weeks or the in-between weeks, Carla puts together an email that has the video in case you're not able to watch it. We don't, we do ask that that stay internal. The video itself um, stays internal to the chambers um, and not necessarily to your membership. But in that, we also try to link to, <clears throat> sorry, we also try to link to assets and documents, resources, particularly around any of the bills um, that we're able to provide. We also link to uh, BCA's capital briefing, the email that they send out. Any of that that you, and we ask that you share that with your membership particularly with your governmental affairs committee, anybody that you think um, that those documents or resources would be good to 
um, please do share that. That's what this is about. It's not just about us communicating it to you guys. It's for you to communicate it to your business community um, to make those calls and to be that grassroots. So next Friday, you'll get that email. Again, it's um, links that you can share, the video to rewatch and that sort of thing. So Clay, I was uh, I was doing a little song and dance there to kind of buy some time. But if you want to continue, please do. Uh oh, can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yep, you're good. I don't know what's going on. Zoom is not cooperating with me today. It's the um, weather. We'll just blame it on the weather. It's kind of nasty out there. Well, uh, apologize, but uh, to, to finish up the uh, Mike's answer, see, the the Seeds Act. I'm not sure where it where it cut off, but we are asking for another. Uh, 25 million. Um, you know, we understand that that you know probably some legislators are unhappy that their areas uh, didn't get any assistance from the last round of awards. But you know, another round will help to to, to spread uh, it around the state, which we think is very important. Good. Any, Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. Hearing none, um, I think that we will adjourn for the day. Again, stay tuned to your email. Um, if you are not receiving particular, if you are the C, um, if you're our primary rep, um, you should be receiving directly from BCA any of their call to actions because as a member of CCAA, you're a member of BCA. So you should be receiving those call to actions. We will try to make sure that when we get them, we're resharing them out to you. Um, but then also pay attention to those Friday emails um, where we summarize everything that's happening, all of the resources um, that we have that are available. So in the interim, um, reach out to me, reach out to Clay, Caroline, anybody on the team um, that can help and uh, enjoy a rainy, a rainy day here in Montgomery. So, all right. Thank y'all. Thank you, Clay. Y'all have You're a good welcome. weekend. Y'all too.